we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by virtue of the cross, joy has come into the whole world. We're going to sing our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. So with you. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, <coughs> a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take, you, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness, 
Grant all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So we're going to have our first reading, which is read by Sally Ann. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make a covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you, and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Our New Testament reading is read to us by David. The reading is from Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 to the end. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham, or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are but to be their heirs, faith is null and the promised is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in which he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead. For he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us, we believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, 
who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and we raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, and be rejected by the elders of the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again, he said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak, and may I be heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's an interesting gospel passage. If we take the context, before this, this is just after we've had a lot of parables and a lot of similes. Jesus has been talking, not so much in coded message, but he's been talking in, in story form, for which you can either take what he says as literal, or you can see the interpretation about what is to come. But Mark makes it very clear here that what Jesus is saying, he is saying very openly and very straightforwardly to his disciples. He say it to them because he doesn't want any sort of misunderstanding. But it's that bit about those who wish, wish to be my followers should deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. This is not a metaphor. Literally, two lines earlier, Mark has said, he said this openly to be understood. Crucifixion wasn't some strange thing which was reserved only for Christ. It was a general means of, to, uh, of executing the worst offenders against the state. Not the worst offenders, but the worst offenders against the state. If we think back in history, and I hope I'm going to show you my, my movie nerdiness here, if we look to the movie Spartacus uh, with Kurt Russell, um, so Kurt Douglas, rather, he, you can see here at the end of the movie, after the slave rebellion has been quashed, the Romans make examples of all the slaves. They execute them by a crucifixion from where they are, as they were defeated, all the way to the gates of Rome along the Appalachian Way. This was something which would have been talked about. This is something which was known. The idea of someone being crucified as a political dissident, as someone who had offended the state, was well known. So when Jesus says, you must deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow me, the disciples understand this. They know exactly what he's asking. And so that is why Peter says, no, no, this must not happen. And he, t- and he says, Jesus, stop doing, t- talking about this. You, you can't talk about dying. And so Jesus shoves him away and says, no. Get behind me. Get away from me. You are trying to divert me from my job, what I've been sent here to do. Because despite the fact that Jesus explained very openly, this is what must happen. Peter hasn't fully grasped what he means. And so he thinks Jesus wants to go and die. The cross for us as Christians is a symbol of hope and a symbol of salvation. But when Jesus is speaking, it is a symbol of really nasty death. It is a lingering death. It is a death which is designed to punish as it kills. It is designed to be there for as long as possible. 
I was in the Holy Land a few years ago, and there is a reconstruction of a first century Nazare- uh, Nazarene village. Uh, there's a wine press, and there's vineyards, and there's uh, they, one thing they did find buried was a cross. It's a, it is just a cross which was put down there. And there's a, if you look, it's not just a simple piece of wood with a crossbar. There's a little kind of lump of wood, half a, half a log, just where, where, where your bottom would be, so you could sit on it. And that's designed purely to extend the torture. This is how horrible this is. The people who had designed this, which is, you know, the Romans had designed the crucifixion, they thought, right, well, how can we extend this? How can we make this a little bit easier? Because the whole point is, you don't die from the wound. Actually, having a, a, a nail through the, the wrist or the hand and a nail through the feet won't kill you. You die from dehydration, from exposure. But also, you die from your own body crushing your lungs. Because when your arms are stretched out like this, it's much harder to breathe. When you're like that, and your weight is on your arms, you cannot compress your chest properly. And so you suffocate yourself, which is really horrible. And so they thought, well, how can we extend this? How can we make this even worse? And they put this little seat in so that when you're, you're absolutely exhausted, you can just kind of perch a little bit on there. Not enough to take the weight fully off your arms or off your feet, but enough just to catch your breath. This is what the world that the the disciples were in, this is what they were very much aware of. And so for Jesus to say, you must deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow me. This is not just some hyperbole. This is not just some abstract idea. This is a very real and very risible um, uh, request. This is something which is very important and something which has real meaning. And so it does for us too. Because... Whilst we see the cross of Christ as that symbol of hope and that symbol of, of, of redemption, we must deny ourselves. And we must recognize that to be Christian is sometimes to put ourselves at odds with others. It is to recognize that we are putting ourselves against what many people would say is the norm. We are sent to be countercultural. We are sent to show kindness and compassion to those that society would want to reject. We are sent to show the love of God to all that he has created. That's everything. We must show that love. We cannot say, well, we like you, but we don't like you. We like them, but we don't like them. We are called to love. We are called to recognize God in everything that exists. We must treat his creation with the respect it deserves. Because that call to his disciples that Jesus talks about, That call to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him wasn't just for the disciples. It is for all who would wish to call themselves Christian. Because we can't just look at the gospel and say, well, that's nice, and then carry on doing what we're doing. The gospel should fundamentally change who we are for the better. We should be more accepting. We should be more generous. We should be more caring. Because that is what Jesus does. We must recognize that if we are to be Christian, we need to emulate Christ as best we can. We need to recognize what he did and how he did it, and we must do the same. We need to learn our Gospels. We need to know what Jesus would do, and we need to be prayerful about it. Because without that life of prayer, without that dedication to understanding who Christ is, and what he did whilst he was with us in human form, then we are not doing doing him justice. We are not denying ourselves and taking up our cross and following him. Because to deny ourselves, we must say that we are actually, we're not the best thing we can be. Christ is the best we can be. And through Christ being the best we can be, we can deny ourselves. We can take up our crosses, and we can follow him. So as we continue our journey through Lent, Let us be mindful of what is in the gospel. Let us reflect on how we are leading our lives. Are we doing our best? Are we doing uh, leading our lives according to what Jesus taught us? Are we showing love and care for God's creation? Because if we're not, we need to reflect. We need to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him.
So let us stand either physically or in our hearts as we confess our faith and the faith of the whole church in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Our prayers are led by Janet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of grace given to us through our faith in you. Help us all to be steadfast and strong in our beliefs and the way we live. As we journey through Lent, help us to draw near to you in prayer and praise, ignoring everything that distracts us from moving closer to you. We thank you that you are a generous God who gives us everything, much more than we will ever need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the warmer weather and for the signs of spring that remind us of the beauty and constancy of your world. Jesus spent 40 days and nights on his own in the wilderness, resisting opportunities to be popular and powerful and emerging stronger, ready to do what you had planned for him in the world. Help us during these days of Lent to spend more time listening to you reflecting and considering how we too can be ready to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Isolation, solitude, hunger, thirst and temptation were all things that Jesus experienced during his time in the wilderness. We know that we are all tempted in many different ways to stray from the path that we know is right. Strengthen and encourage us in our weaknesses. Help us to avoid temptation. We pray for those people in the world who, for whatever reason, don't seem to have a sense of right and wrong. We pray for disadvantaged communities and countries adversely affected by the virus. We pray for resolve to find ways to end inequality and deprivation. We pray that there will be a fair distribution of the vaccines throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We pray for Peter and Patricia as they return to Aru. We pray that they will have a safe journey that they will be welcomed back and that they will be able to complete their mission. We also pray for Henry, Maria and Catherine. As many of us look forward to a time with fewer everyday restrictions, we thank you for being the reassuring presence in our lives. We pray for those who are suffering in any way and for those who have little to look forward to. We pray especially for those who are depressed or lonely. We ask that your healing presence surround Jilly and Davy, Nancy and Jean, Pamela and Gilbert, Pat and Derek, 
and those whom we name in a moment of quiet. We remember Dean, Gary, Lord, Ella, in your mercy, Teddy, hear our Mike. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those people who are suffering with terminal illness and the knowledge that they are dying. Help us all to face our own mortality, secure in the knowledge that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross gave us the ultimate gift of eternal life. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. We pray for the souls of Sylvia and Samantha. We pray for their families and their friends as they prepare for their funerals. We pray for all who are grieving. We ask, Lord, that you would come to comfort them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. So I invite you to stand either physically or in your hearts for the peace. <clears throat> Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer one another physically and distantly a sign of peace. Peace be with you. So we're going to sing our um, next hymn, which is Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all compassion. Through your goodness we have your, this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Let us pray. Generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, at your table we present these gifts, symbols of the work you've given us to do. Use it, use us, in the service of your world, in the glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
For at this time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgments that have come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, who on the night before he died had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bring before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady, St Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you this day and always. Amen. So let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversaries which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we journey forward on our way. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So quick notices. Um, we will have morning and evening prayer as normal, 9 and 5, Monday through Friday. And that will be on Facebook and then on YouTube directly afterwards. And on Friday at 10 o'clock, we'll have our Stations of the Cross, which is a Zoom service. Um, if you'd like to join us uh, for that, then please um, uh, check your emails. If you have not, if you don't get my weekly emails, please let me know, and I'll happily send you details. Um, Wednesday at half past seven, which I forgot to put on there, we will be having our, um, uh, our Lent course, uh, which is again on Zoom, which is week two of Not a Tame Lion. Uh, if, you had, if you didn't get to join us last week, you thought, oh, I'd like to join, do let me know, and I'll happily include you. Um, and we're looking at C.S. Lewis's writings and two movies which have made based upon his life and his writings. Um, next Sunday, we will be uh, having a 9.30 streamed Eucharist with catch-up coffee afterwards. This is subject to change as the PCC and I are meeting tomorrow evening. That's a reminder of the PCC members. If you are <coughs> at St. Thomas's or St. Mary's, we'll be meeting tomorrow night. The Zoom link went out a couple of days ago with a few other bits and pieces for you to read and look at. Um, and there'll be a couple of other conversations we had during those meetings as well. So, let us come together, let us depart, and I hope to see as many of you as possible shortly on Zoom for a bit of a coffee and a catch-up. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May God, the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us in all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So we're going to sing our final hymn. We can hear a decent version rather than me singing, Lord Jesus, think on me.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.